me that I cannot. Don't mention that word to me, I cannot. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. There's not a thing that you cannot do. There's not a thing that you cannot do as a Christian. When you give your life to Jesus, all the victory that Jesus has accomplished for us over Satan and on that cross is available to us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, there's nothing I cannot do. There's nothing that God cannot change in my life. There's no sin that He cannot take away out of my life because He has paid the price with His own blood for us to be free. Give Him a hand. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to a few in your Bibles, 1 Thessalonians, please. Let's read in God's Word. God's Word is awesome. Amen. 1 Thessalonians, Afrikaans in Thessalonicense. Hallelujah, verse 3. You can read from a second part, but I'll read from a first part. We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith. Give Jesus a hand. I like that. There's many people today that preach that um, you should not produce works. The one who does not produce works, he is a powerless Christian. And he, the one who does not produce fruit, Jesus says it's such a tree. The father wanted to cut down, but then the garden who's Jesus said, give him another year. Let's fertilize him. Let's give him water. Let's look after this tree. Maybe next year he produces fruit. Say to God next to you, God is looking for fruit. This fruit that the Bible speaks about, I mean, it is not difficult for a fig tree to produce figs. Is that difficult for him? So the Bible says every tree is known by the fruit that he produces. If he does not produce fruit, that means that it's a fake. It's not a planting of the Lord. I mean, and every tree that my heavenly father did not plant, my father will uproot. But every tree that my heavenly father has planted, he will not uproot because it will give him the fruit that he desire of that specific tree. Say, every tree is known by the fruit he produces. Every Christian will produce fruit. Amen? The first signs that you will produce fruit is when Jesus is changing you. And when you start to produce fruit and you're very happy with yourself, he starts to prune you because the Bible says he pruned those who produce fruit. He pruned those who be a fruit. Those who do not be a fruit, he will not prune. But those who be a fruit, he prunes, so there might be a more fruit. A wild tree with wild branches does not produce good fruit. If you leave a tree, a mango tree, a peach tree, any tree, plum tree, fig tree, if you leave that tree to just grow wild as it wants to grow, you will see it put all its energy into the branches. Worthless branches who grow wild. And the fruit will be very small. If you want good fruit from the tree, you prune the, the tree to size and into the shape that you desire it and put more of the tree's energy and, and, and life into the fruit. And then it produces you with awesome mangoes. Awesome peaches and awesome plums and awesome figs. I mean, or awesome apricots. But you leave that tree to grow wild. That peach tree, you get small peaches, you almost don't taste them. It tastes like water because you allowed all the, all the life of that tree to go into the wild branches. When I'm finished with the tree, my wife always look at me. She says, when you're done with the tree, you've done with him. But I know what he's going to do next year. Hallelujah. So my heavenly father also pruned me so that I might produce more fruit. He will also prune you if you produce more fruit so that you might produce more fruit. When you produce fruit, he will prune you so that you might give him more fruit. In Jesus' name. Say to God, don't lose heart. It is not difficult for a peach tree to produce his peaches. It is his nature. It's not difficult for a fig tree to produce figs. That's what I said this morning. It is to keep his commandments. It's not burdensome. It is natural because you've got the spirit of the Lord in you, which is your life. 
But for the one who is not saved, it is impossible to produce godly fruit. That's what they tried to do in the Old Covenant. They tried to give God the fruit that which he desired, and they had not the Holy Spirit in them, so it, it was not natural for them to produce godly fruit. So it became a big effort, and they failed so many times they had to sacrifice day after day, bring sacrifices, 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 to cover up all their mistakes and failure to produce fruit. More glorious is the new covenant. If the old covenant was, was, had so much power, how much more must the new covenant have power? Because the first covenant is the covenant of the flesh and the letter. Say the flesh and the letter. The new covenant is the covenant of the spirit. I mean, Jesus did not even do away with the old covenant. He just said, this one is not working because of the inability of man. Then a man came to earth. God became a man. Say, a man came to earth for the sole purpose to destroy the flesh and sin. So that man might bring God the honor and the glory and the fruit which he desired. He came for this purpose, to destroy the works of Satan. Satan is the father of lies and he's the creator of sin. There was no sin before he rebelled in heaven. The first sin that was committed ever in the, in the universe, ever, was rebellion towards God. Rebellion. Satan led a rebellion towards God. Still today you get very similar rebellion in businesses, workplaces, churches, schools. You should be careful that you don't walk in the spirit of Satan. 